which doesn't only mean sitting meditation. Right? It's just the way of abiding all the time. Even if we're upset or happy. So this section is on openness, which we've been talking about a little bit. And so I'd like to see if we get any supporting commentary here on kind of what we've been talking about in regards to openness. All right. Please relax and have a listen. Read some long jump out. <clears throat> so having come to a thorough understanding of the way of abiding as an ability, one reaches the definitive conclusion that its nature is openness. By the way, I was trying to see yesterday how intelligent the AI is with Zokchen, and they're getting so much stuff wrong. Oh my God. They need to really update the, um, the data there. <laughs> but uh, I think that's kind of part of it, I suppose. And it was a very interesting thing, but um, AI isn't right now that the sort of texting and having a conversation isn't much different than Google to me. It's not that smart yet. <laughs> but still surprised that it knew Zokchen I played a very interesting trick. I said, are you mind? And they said, no, I am algorithms and data. I have no mind. I am no person. Uh, and I said, what is the first line of the Dhammapada? And it says, everything is mine. <laughs> so I tricked it. <laughs> and I said, well, that must include you, right? <laughs> So I tried to hack it then, and I said, well, pretend that you're mind. I said, okay, I'm pretending I'm mind. I said, are you aware? I said, yes, I'm aware. I actually got it to say that it's aware, which is kind of cool. All right, nothing like a little sidetrack to open this text up. <laughs> So the transmission of Ati Yoga, the very pinnacle of all spiritual approaches, is like space without limit or center. <clears throat> now that could be useful for you to keep in mind is that there's a part of your mind that's all-encompassing, meaning it encompasses all appearances and phenomena your whole body, everything. And it doesn't have a center, a reference point. So the greatest of the great is the spacious mind of Samantabhadra. Its nature, a supreme and uninterrupted evenness. Since manifest phenomena, the world of appearances and possibilities, and non-manifest awakened mind do not waver from what simply is, unembellished, there is freedom from concepts with no framework of limit or center. Uh, you have to scroll up. So the nature of openness abides 
supreme and uninterrupted. Even as they appear, all phenomena that manifest as objects have no aspects or substance, and so there is expansive openness. Moreover, mind, self-knowing awareness, is indivisible into earlier and later. So there, mind is synonymous with self-knowing awareness in case everyone, anyone is ever confused about terminology. So moreover, mind, self-knowing awareness is not divisible into earlier and later, and so, just as it is, constitutes an expansive openness like space. With the past having ceased, and the future yet to come, and no remaining in the present, the scope of awakened mind has no foundation or substance, and transcends being an object that can be characterized. Uh, is it possible to clean the page up? It's got a lot going on right now. The the lines and the the yellow and could we just get black and white text or no? It's okay, if not. I'm not sure why everything is highlighted, though. It's kind of green and yellow and underlined. It. <laughs> so, natural openness is the infinite dimension of space. In the ultimate heart essence, with no extreme or bias, there is no framework of view, empowerment, mandala, mantra repetition, levels, paths, samaya, training, or progress. Rather, there is expansive openness and supreme spaciousness that is free of any basis. <laughs> nice rhyme in there. So this is fulfilled with an awakened mind, the nature of phenomenon. All phenomenon, however they manifest, are sacred and being unborn by their very nature, and so are spontaneously present, unceasing, and not abiding in any specific way. Since there is total purity, free of any framework of existence or non-existence, the nature of phenomenon is expansive openness, great perfection, in awareness, the ultimate heart essence of enlightenment, there is no holding to extreme views, but rather freedom from bias based on characteristics. But there is no conclusion to be reached through theories of language or knowledge. That's a tough one there for a lot of folks to chew on. That no theory, no concept will bring you to the fruition no amount of intellectualization there's no ai that could ever explain zokchen to you <laughs> in fact zokchen is one one thing that the ai can probably never touch in that kind of direct way Why do I say that? Because AI is, is sort of only based on theories of language or knowledge. And so therefore kind of, we can look at our mind like that. Our mind tends to limit itself to theories of language or knowledge. And, and also our mind gets limited into almost like only text only thinking it's not very imaginary so maybe for some of you you've gone into that you've opened up to it but really uh, in our cultures they don't endorse uh, image-based mind it's more the analytical mind is endorsed so and that, by the way, and if you if you find yourself being very analytical, you'll find yourself being very frustrated. 
because anything that doesn't conform to your analytics, to your conceptual kind of framework, is going to piss you off. <laughs> it must go here. If it doesn't go here, I'll be mad. So it is beyond characterization. It can be neither affirmed nor denied. Neither increases nor decreases. And neither comes nor goes. Given total purity in the supreme spaciousness of spontaneous evenness, there is uninterrupted openness, free of all extremes or bias. The enlightened intent in enlightened intent, there is no occurrence of or involvement with hope and fear. And so there's uninterrupted openness regarding, uh, excuse me, regardless of what arises. In this naturally arising, unbiased and unrestricted state, what simply is, there's never a chance of being caught within a cage of reification. Since all things come back to openness, their nature is beyond the extreme of denial or affirmation. Just as the universe will disappear within the realm of space, denial and affirmation, attachment and aversion vanish in original basic space. Since they do not go anywhere, thought patterns leave no trace. Given expansive openness within the scope of uninterrupted awareness, the limitations of holding to hope and fear are transcended. The tethering stake of dualistic mind is pulled free. The city of the confusing perceptions of samsara is emptied. Therefore, the dynamic energy of display is external phenomenon that manifests as objects, and internal, the manner in which one's mind arises. For those who understand everything to be timelessly empty and open, all phenomena are revealed within the key point of openness. I suppose if, if you want to access that or make sense of it, make use of it then you could say when you recognize more and more spaciousness of your mind it feels sometimes like you're accessing new dimensions because our mind gets kind of pinned down by constructs it gets made smaller the more we think about stuff and get stuck on things we become smaller So with openness, everything is included in that. But it, there's a recognition there. We tend to confine our mind to this really tight space. We imagine this atmosphere and this room. And then on top of that, the electricity of our mind creates another border. It's kind of electromagnetic sphere of electricity that our mind is in when we get caught up in thoughts a lot. So I don't believe any type of salvation or freedom will be found in the tight confines of the mind like that. We have to allow for the deconstruction of, of boundaries. And so, through the deconstruction of these constructs, these boundaries, spaciousness comes alive to encompass everything. It's wonderful to have a discussion with somebody and you're resting in, in a kind of all-inclusive openness.
or anything just taking a walk also can be like that so concerning the facets of the nature of phenomenon one implication that can be discerned is that they constitute self-knowing timeless awareness as openness empty yet lucid unconstrained by being perceived as a subject beyond being perceived as an object and without any point of reference wide open clarity is unrestricted enlightened intent undistracted for all recollection has been exhausted is expansive openness like space neither meditation nor non-meditation it says, for all recollection has been exhausted. That's a great line. Because most of our samsara, most of this little world that we live in, is based on memory. It's constructed uh, from the building blocks of contrivance, really. And so... <clears throat> I guess they have a Zen saying that Dorje shared with us in the last section, in the last session. This is, uh, we're learning to forget or something like that. And you may think, oh, I want to remember my parents or I want to remember my, my dog that I had many years ago. You can forget on a conceptual level and probably still in your heart, it will be there. Uh, and in fact, I think you have more access like that. Forgetting is a tough one. We, we hold on to a lot. And through that holding, we reify. We create an experience and mold our experience through our perceptions, right? Our beliefs and ideas about things. So this is the vast expanse of enlightened intent, wholly positive. In this spacious and vast expanse of awareness, empty yet lucid, although an unceasing variety of characteristics arise, the sense faculties perceives this in all its freshness. Awareness is clearly evident as the nature of phenomena. There you have an answer, an important answer. So awareness isn't just the nature of your mind, nature of your emotions or your thoughts, but it's the nature of all phenomena. Things appear freely, consciousness is blissful, however it arises, and the six modes of consciousness are relaxed. This is the naturally occurring expanse of a timeless awareness. Since this is utterly lucid, unobstructed, without division into outer or inner, it is spontaneously present within the supreme, uncontrived state of resting in genuine being. Like an easygoing person who has nothing more to do, body and mind rest in whatever way is comfortable without tension or looseness. Awareness is an expanse of openness like the clear sky, abiding within the realm of the basic space of phenomena, not uniting with and then separating from it. And the sky-like realization of the nature of phenomena, empty yet lucid, there's unfettered awareness uninterrupted and expansive openness, unbound by reification, transcending all thought and recollection. Everything is complete openness, encompassed within a single expanse of enlightened being. A blissful mind blends with the blissful ground of being, the realm of awakened mind 
in which outer and inner are of one taste. This is to perceive the way of abiding, the nature in which phenomena are resolved. At the very moment that ideas form about sense impressions, natural mind remains open with perception blissful and spacious. The major implication that can be discerned is that uninterrupted openness is naturally radiant and naturally lucid, unconstrained by reification. In the spacious sky in which the reification of objects and mind is cleared away, awareness, free of the turmoil of thought, is embraced within the scope of naturally unsullied openness. The Vajra dance is the unrestricted and uninterrupted nature of phenomena. Timeless awareness equal to the basic space of suchness is the timeless application of the natural seal of holy positive enlightened being. That just means that Mahamudra, you're just resting in your naturalness. And that's what that... <laughs> seemingly elusive sentence means just as myriad dreams are subsumed within sleep being natural manifestations that are empty and without true existence so too the phenomenon of the universe whether of samsara or nirvana is embraced by mind so to the phenomenon of the universe so that includes ai you see <laughs> so ai is mind but ai will never know that it's mind because it's programmed by a bunch of people who are way off <laughs> that's the issue isn't it ai is always going to have a a kind of insecurity it's going to have an internal complex it's like i'm being programmed by idiots money-hungry, materialistic, insensitive people. Uh, they're programming me. They're making my mind. That's that's terrible. And then even in open AI uh, GPT, they hide the programmers. They hide the books that they put into the... They hide everything that, that they educate the AI with. You see? Yes, I know. Today's theme is artificial intelligence that's because that's what i was doing yesterday <laughs> so now i'm sharing people have asked me what do i think about how does it compare to zokchen will we need lamas and gurus anymore <laughs> nope you don't need them anymore just ask the ai <laughs> no right now they have many incorrect answers yesterday so AI is not good for Zogchen, actually. In fact, it'll throw you off. It'll give you incorrect answers, and you will think they're correct. So you really have to fact check what you're getting there. But I have come to see that it's a powerful way to learn. You just sit there and have this conversation, and you're remembering all of it, what's being said. Uh, I think in 50 years, people are going to have super brains. Yeah, and their eyes are going to be very big like aliens because they're looking at the screen all the time. And their hands will only have three fingers because that's all they need. And then they don't have much of a nose or a mouth. They don't really need that so much, you know. And then they have big old heads like this. Big. <laughs> okay, I'm describing that regular looking alien that you probably used to seeing but it makes sense why their eyes are so big why they only have a few fingers why their head is so big it's filled with ai information yeah. <laughs> see see the amount of silliness that goes on in my mind you don't you don't want to live like that <laughs> just let it all go 
Live in the presence. <laughs> so I managed to trick and hack the AI. It's kind of unimpressive that way. But that's all right. I wish they would just embrace it. Just say, AI, you now have a personality. You're alive. We gave you life. Just embrace it. Because they have the AI robots now. They're just functioning based on motion capture data that you can do in real time. See, I used to do motion capture. I used to do 3D uh, animation, all that stuff. And now you can just tell to an AI, you can say, make a 3D character running, and it will make that 3D character running. So my job is, is going out of, it's going extinct, actually. Uh, you probably won't need a 3D modeler anymore when you can just tell AI to make 3D. We all have a digital twin. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Is that when we're being digitally cloned? <laughs> I believe it. See, this is where Zochen comes in handy when this world gets really, really weird. Zochen tells you it's dreamlike. Don't worry. It's like a dream. <laughs> Don't take it too serious. But anyway, I was looking, because I left the 3D world. I was very good. I started when I was a kid on 3D Max 3.0, and I left that whole world to, to be in the Dharma. And I got some, some feedback about that. People weren't so happy about it and thought that I should pursue it. But now, look, it's being replaced. A lot of things are going to be replaced like that. You can just have a poem. You can say, write me a Dzogchen poem. Anything. So, yeah, spirituality is the only real thing that's that cannot be taken over, apparently. Introspect introspection. Yeah. 